Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Hello Katie and for today's vlog, I'm going to share you the step-by-steps on how to be a UKRN from the Philippines and from UAE where I came from. <laughs> I'm so excited to share it to you guys because um, when I was doing this, when I was aiming for UK, I don't have anybody and I used to ask uh, some of the Filipinos but sometimes they are not so generous in sharing the information on how to be a UKRN so I started this journey five years ago it's a really long journey I had the IELTS done three times it's really difficult for me but it's fine I didn't quit so I first I took my IELTS 2016 and then I was depressed that time because that was my first time to fail an exam uh, which is not good for my mental health that time. I'm so confident that I'm gonna I'm gonna pass, but I didn't pass. So that is the first step of um, that is the first step first that you're going to do, not the CBT, but I'm telling you, do the IELTS first or the OET, which is the language exam, because the CBT this is very easy, but the IELTS this is the the struggle of all the nurses. If, especially if you're not that good in English because that is not our uh, mother tongue or our native language but anyway that is the first step all right okay so when I was in UAE I always update my LinkedIn so LinkedIn is a professional platform wherein the employers or the agency can see what are your qualification what are your experiences so if you're in UAE or in Dubai it will help you a lot even if you're in the Philippines, it's good to have a link in. So update what is your experience, your it's like a CV, but in you know it's like a Facebook. And I've got a lot of messages there. There comes a point that I cannot choose. It's very difficult to choose because there are a lot of organizations or agencies that are running after you, especially when you have the IELTS. It's good to have the IELTS because uh, the processing is very quick when you have the IELTS because the IELTS or the English exam, that will hold you back. That is the only thing that will hold you back, I'm telling you. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, so when the agency, when the agency um, contacted you, they will tell you uh, what are the requirements and they will tell you about where are the trusts located in UK and they're going to choose or they're going to deploy you is the second thing so the agency will tell you what to do all right and also uh, the second thing as well um, when the agency contacted you they will tell you to register in NMC NMC stands for nursing midwifery council that is regulatory body that regulates all the nurses and healthcare professionals here in United Kingdom. It's like PRC in in the Philippines. Then once you registered to the NMC, that time I paid on my own and the agency promised to to pay me back and I'm going to tell you later what can you reimburse but that again is depend on the agency. So after you register in the NMC, the NMC will prompt you to register also in person view. So person view, this is the website that will ask you to register and then they will email you if you are ready to take the CBT. CBT is the computer-based test and that is like a board exam in a computer format and it's like 120 items I believe. So in Dubai there are a lot of test locations so you're going to choose which are the location and also in the Philippines there are also locations but in other parts of UAE I'm not sure where are the location but don't worry they will tell you so CBT is 120 items and it's easy for me I I suppose because unlike the the board exam in the Philippines it's uh, like a chi chicken <laughs> okay I'm bragging I'm bragging now because 500 the NLE was 500 items and the CBT is only 120 items so but still even if it's easy you have to study because more it's more an objective type of exam so if you don't know what are the type of dressings then boom it's not a situational thing so make sure that you study as well there are study groups in facebook it's called cbt group in uk or there's also mma mma is my agency so you just type mma in facebook and it will appear and cbt group pinoy nurses uk Pinoy nurses in UK. Once you have your CBT passed, it will appear on your NMC registration portal. Alright, and then also the other requirements 
you don't don't worry the agency are going to guide you in the steps by steps so mine is mma so mma is so supportive i'm so lucky because when i was uh, doing this when i passed the exam the covid game so it was delayed and delayed but it can be easier as six months as little as six months if you are really quick in completing the requirements but i'm not sure how quick you are going to be because of the pandemic so one of the requirements are police clearance for the last 10 years where where are you residing if you are in uae and or if you are in philippines you have to submit all of those police clearance and also police clearance has expiries three to six months and also you have to get your nbi clearance when i was in dubai i applied for my nbi uh, through lbc my registration license or my prc license is about to expire so i applied renewal of license and the nbi at the same time through lbc in uae embassy in dubai in the consulate for others they have this lupon certificate i don't know how what is lupon certificate until they ask me lupon certificate or registration certificate is also needed so i was thinking that lupon certificate i'm sorry i was thinking that registration certificate is the diploma but i was wrong so there's lupon certificate and there's also diploma so that is separate uh, also you have to do a rep they have, will ask you a reference check from your employers they will ask the email address of your employers and they will contact them they will contact the employers if you're in good character so and also they will do a verification all right so that is the major requirements when you're applying okay so and also you will do an interview on your trust for example they decided where where are you going to work you they will conduct a skype interview or zoom interview after that they will send you the offer letter so if you're okay with the offer and you will sign the offer letter and then they are going to get back to you now you, what you're going to do is they all you have to wait is for your certificate of sponsorship the, so the certificate of sponsorship is issued by your employer here in uk because that certificate of sponsorship is required for your visa application so you cannot they cannot apply for a visa without certificate of sponsorship all right so for me when i was in dubai they asked me to go in to go in the what is that vfs global it's like at an appearance you have to go there they, they, they didn't ask me anything they just asked me what is my job and everything i, I forgot they'll take your photos your your fingerprints and then you will bring your passport there uh, this is not a uh, vlog um, i'm here in wafi mall located in healthcare city i'm here to process my visa going to uk so i have an appointment at 10 o'clock uh, it's march 10 today and um, then they will collect your um, appointment uh, form and the other forms that uh, they ask you to print my agency prepared it for me so i just printed out the appointment form and the uh, checklist uh, approved that i uploaded all my documents and um, after that i also gave my passport <laughs> So after, I think after one week, after one week, I got my visa. Mm, yeah, I got my visa with the, uh, the validity of the visa. And then after that, they're going to book your flight. And then the flight and everything. Book your flight. After the flight, they're going to welcome you here, here in UK. Welcome to UK. Come to Great Britain. <laughs> Social. So, welcome to Great Britain na. Uh, if you're coming now, anytime soon, there are restrictions. So, we have this red list, green and amber. If you're coming from a red list country like me, coming from the UAE, or if you're coming from the Philippines or India, then you have to quarantine. So, I was quarantined for 11 days and then two COVID swabs on my own. So, I have to do my swabs. If you are negative, then you're free to go after 11 days and then you will start working. So after start 
And then when you start working, it's not the end yet. You are considered band for or healthcare assistant. You are still shadowing the senior staff or the nurses. And your salary will be HCA salary, not a nurse salary. The hospital or the trust will book you the OSCE and then here you go. You need to do the OSCE. After the OSCE, if you pass, then you are UKR and now, UKR and now. Wow! It looks very simple but it requires a lot of hard work, patience on how to, patience on patience of completing the requirements it's really it's not easy i was in the long process but um here we go we are here now and i'm so glad that i made it i'm thanking myself that i didn't quit and as as a gratitude to others i always encourage my friends to never give up try and try and god has mercy and he knows when we work hard so we are going to aim that Alright, so if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below and I'm willing to help you and give you tips on the exams and I'll see you on my next video. Good luck! And I hope you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe on my YouTube channel for other future videos I will be making on the nursing life here in UK hopefully and again thanks for watching god bless you guys love you